every hour of every day, the Royal Navy, the Army, and the Royal Air Force are ready to respond rapidly to protect Britain's interests overseas or to help make the world a safer place. They have state-of-the-art battle-winning equipment and the ability to operate effectively together wherever they're needed. And they're just as capable of deploying swiftly to provide vital humanitarian aid. That's Britain's three armed services. Modern forces for the modern world. Flexible, deployable, sustainable, and made up of dedicated, highly trained, totally professional men and women. They're drawn from every part of the nation they serve and from all walks of life. They train to demanding standards, to extremely high levels of technical competence as well, and using the latest techniques and technologies. The range of individual skills they learn is vast, and increasingly, many of them are multi-skilled. But even highly trained and motivated people need and deserve the best tools for the job. Even though the Cold War is over, the world is still troubled and unpredictable. So British forces have to be able to face many different types of threat equally effectively. That means having the best operational equipment. It also means maintaining a capability to rapidly deploy far away from the UK. It requires a rolling program of upgrades to keep operational effectiveness at its peak. And it demands investment in new equipment so that all three services can be ready for whatever the future holds. The next generation of helicopters, greater strategic lift capability, a potent new world-class fighter. And further ahead, a replacement carrier-borne aircraft and the future offensive air system. Procurement of new equipment is good for jobs and our economy, when industry is competitive and best value. And value for money are the watchwords for the services themselves too, as they constantly strive to enhance their operational effectiveness. One of the most important recent developments is the increasing extent to which our armed forces operate jointly, both packing a bigger punch and making sure every pound counts for defense. There's a tri-service helicopter command, a joint Navy and RAF fixed-wing Harrier force, and a joint Army and Air Force air defense organization. Most fundamental of all, there are now powerful integrated forces capable of reacting rapidly and if required simultaneously when dangerous situations arise around the world. For these days, a crisis is less likely to come to us. We must be prepared to go to the crisis. Defense diplomacy, building trust and confidence with former enemies plays a major part in reducing the causes of instability and conflict and the likelihood of war. But sometimes only the threat of force, and occasionally only force itself, will contain a danger such as a country that threatens its neighbors. Here, we will often act in concert with our allies or on behalf of the wider international community, as we do in other circumstances when the principal concern is to protect vulnerable civilians from repression. Helping former war zones to get back to normal life. Enforcing an often fragile peace. Maintaining no-fly zones, helping to ensure that dictators cannot massacre their own people ensuring shipping lanes are safe. And beyond these purely military tasks are a host of others. 
There is fishery protection, for example, and search and rescue. Help in civil operations, in the fight against terrorism, international crime and drug running. Assistance when natural disasters strike and the provision of vital humanitarian aid of many other kinds. All carried out with the same professionalism that the three services bring to bear in everything they do. Ordinary people in their backgrounds perhaps, but delivering extraordinary results. Both in their ability to counter any of the threats that may face us and our allies, and in helping those less fortunate than we are. The Royal Navy, the Army, and the Royal Air Force, all ready to meet the challenges of the modern world.